welcome to the National League Rugby Review Show Round 21 Highlights. Despite the weather and the impact of Storm Eunice, there's still a bumper show to bring you this week, so let's crack on with the action. Our key game comes from National 1 and from Hayward Road as third place Sale FC take on Tabletop as Roslyn Park. The home side have won four on the bounce coming into this one, whilst Roslyn Park had their promotion wings clipped by Rams RFC last time out. Before the game, everyone at Hayward Road and across National League Rugby paid tribute to Jack Jeffrey who died after a serious injury which he sustained in the act of scoring when playing for Evesham Rugby Club last weekend. He was just 27 years old. So it'll be Roslyn Park here to get us in the way in this National 1 clash and that's been taken unconventionally by James Robbins. And perhaps a chance for Sale to draw first blood in this contest. And here's Robbins who hoists the ball high into the skies. A challenging kick. Who's going to be underneath it? It could fall to Edges, but it falls nicely to Metcalf, who's racing away here. Metcalf, Jackson's in pursuit, but he flicks it beautifully onto Mulcrone. And Mulcrone will score the first try of the afternoon at Hayward Road. And Robbins converts for 7 0 to the home side. Park have the ball again to the left of the sail post. They go once more, very close to the line here. Ellis looks like he's got his hands underneath the ball now for the league leaders. What can he do? Ellis, is he over? And he is over according to the referee. And Leonard levels things up at Hayward Road for 7 all. Been a good start to the second half this by Rosling Park. And another penalty is going to go their way here. Yes, it is. And Leonard has already missed one in the second period. Makes no mistake this time to give Roslyn Park a 10-7 lead. Now Saunders with the throw. This time finds his target, Graham Roslyn Park, moving forward. Sale doing that utmost to soak up more Roslyn Park pressure here. Saunders driving this more forward. You can see him just emerging to the left-hand side now. All the Sale players to the right-hand side of the pitch. And that is going to be a try for Saunders, who drives himself over. And Leonard lines up the conversion and Roslyn Park now have a decent cushion here at Hayward Road. Taking almost all of the second half for Sale to flatten the park line and a penalty goes to the home side. They put it in angle, runs into Hughes but the number eight goes over and scores a try. Robbins' conversion is good and we've got a grandstand finish here at Hayward Road. Carlisle with a decent carry there for Sale FC. This has to be the last roll of the dice now, surely for the hosts. And Bradley, the ball's going to be switched down to the left-hand side here to Mulcrone, who gathers well. Mulcrone shugs off Marfo well. Mulcrone, two defenders in pursuit. Oh, he's got away from both of them. And it's going to be Fergus Mulcrone to win it for Sale FC of the death. And Robbins will add the extras. And Sale FC have defeated Roslyn Park here by 21 points to 17. Absolutely, yeah. I think throughout the squad, uh, I think we're looking forward to watching the footage back in terms of watching the, as many lads running down the sideline when uh, Ferg was running in there. But yeah, no, uh, unbelievable really. And credit to Roslyn. I think they're, they're in a lot of control throughout the game. Um, we were pretty poor of our discipline throughout as well, really. And uh, the last 10 minutes, we, we managed to find a way, which, uh, like you say, sometimes happens in sport. So proud of the lads and uh, good performance. Yeah, buzzing. Like, obviously, playing against top of the league is always going to be going to be tough. Um, but we've just got this real key belief in, in our team. And we knew that we could come out and, 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 and have a result today. So we just kind of buckled down. There were a few ill disciplines out there, quite a few, actually. but. We rode, rode the, um, the storm and, and kind of uh, got on with it. Yeah, you mentioned that belief there. Was that like a key moment for you? Because with kind of 15 minutes ago, it looked like Roslyn Park were in control. You mentioned the penalties that went against you, but you seem to just, something seemed to spark within you and you managed to turn the game around. Yeah, definitely. It's something that we've kind of installed in our team and we've really created like a real tight knit group. Um, every rugby team is very tight, but we've just kind of honed in on a few things like in the dress room and, and behind the door. So, um, so yeah, so we've got that real tight feel together and we knew that we could come out here and, 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 and win the game. So what a result that was at the top of National 1. What bearing will that have on the promotion race come April? Steve Jackson's on the mic to bring the rest of the action from National 1. From the summit of National 1 to the foot of the division where Tunbridge Juddians have been struggling to find a way to win following seven straight defeats and their visit to Blackheath didn't begin well as they fell behind inside seven minutes after Nicholas Foster's try. It was a far from ideal start for TJs but five minutes before the break they levelled things up as Harvey Young gobbled up Tom White's kick to restore parity. Early in the second half, White nudged the visitors in front, but replacement George Spencer soon put club back ahead with this try. 
but the division's bottom club were able to end their long wait without a win as White landed two penalties in the final quarter, including this from 45 metres to clinch just their third victory of the campaign. While Sale FC and Rosslyn Park served up a dramatic contest at Haywood Road, promotion chasing Caldy against top two hopefuls Cambridge perhaps wasn't as eventful. Nevertheless, the importance of securing a victory was still on the same scale and it was first blood to the Wirral outfit after 11 minutes when Ben Jones pinged over a penalty. This was always going to be a close battle after these sides had played out a 22-22 draw back in October and Jones was on hand to double Caldy's advantage from the tee shortly after the interval. Caldy head coach Matt Cairns admitted afterwards that his side had altered their game plan to suit the weather conditions and Jones' third penalty ultimately helped the host a victory. Cambridge had opted to go for the corner rather than settle for the three points on a couple of occasions at Peyton Field and in the end this attritional contest came down to fine margins and the boot of Jones. Darlington Moden Park enjoyed success the last time they were on their own patch and the North East side gave the home support something to smile about once again, this time against Chinner. Gary Law's men flew out of the blocks and set the tone for their high tempo display when Ben Franklin scooted over before Ewan McCurdy and Ollie Walker touched down with less than 20 minutes on the clock. The latter wrapped up the bonus point to help DMP move 28-0 ahead but having raced into a comfortable lead Chinner's George Burton latched on to a loose pass to intercept to get the visitors on the board. However, normal service resumed before half-time as Ralph Appleby added try number five to the host tally. In the second period, Cameron Terry and Fred Tuilangi did cross for Chinna, but it wasn't enough for the away side to seal a bonus point, whilst DMP clinched successive home wins for the first time since October. Rams RFC have been on a roll of late and it continued in round 21 when they welcomed Bishop Stortford to Old Bath Road. The momentum, which is growing within the Rams' ranks, was epitomised by Tarek Hafar's early score before Kieran Lester followed suit on 32 minutes. After the break, the away side mustered up a response as Josh Stannard rounded off a slick Stortford move, but despite Rams going down to 14 men when Max Heyman was sin-binned, the final score in Berkshire went to the home side. Another burrowing try, this time from Ollie Taylor, made sure Rams sealed a sixth win from their last seven matches, and Seb Reynolds' side have also moved up to fourth in the table. Despite there being only five games in National 1 this weekend after Birmingham Mosley against Plymouth and Cinderford's trip to Leeds Tykes were both postponed, there were still plenty of noteworthy moments across the division. Sales win over Rosslyn Park combined with Coldy beating Cambridge means that the gap at the top is now only four points, whilst the aforementioned Rams are bringing themselves into contention. Darlington Modem Park's victory means they are now three points above the drop zone and TJs continue to fight after their excellent win on the road. So that's all the action wrapped up from the third tier. Let's now head to National 2 North and our coverage begins at Crow Trees where Bladen hosts Bourneville. Since beating Bourneville 27-26 back in October, Bladen have only tasted victory once, but that changed in round 21. From early on, the North East side set the tone with James Cooney going over for the first of five tries, while centre partner Alex Clark also scooted across the whitewash at Crow Trees. After losing their last four matches, Chester returned to winning ways, but despite taking a 12-0 lead against Loughborough students, Chris Preen weaved over in a blistering start at Hare Lane. However, two further tries from Chester and a score from Gethin Long put the home side in the ascendancy. The students fought back after the break, but it wasn't enough. Since the turn of the year, Lewis Minikin has been at the heart of everything good about Hull Ionians, and the centre was on hand to score his side's first try against Wharfdale. This came after Tom Davidson had given the visitors the lead from the tee, but a penalty from Minikin and this effort from Nathan Hill saw the eyes bounce back after their defeat to Rotherham in round 20. With Mortimer Park resembling a mud bath, this well-worked move finished off by Ben Owen handed Luctonians the lead against Rotherham Titans in the second half. Late on, Zach Poole had rumbled over to tie the game, but the resulting conversion was adjudged to have gone under the crossbar, meaning the second place side had to settle for a draw. After their game against Huddersfield was postponed last weekend, Stourbridge were making up for lost time as they ran in 12 tries to thump Harrogate in the Midlands. This was a difficult afternoon for David Doherty's side, but scores from Will Yates and Jacob Percival gave the Yorkshire outfit something to smile about, while Stour kept themselves firmly in the title race conversation. 
a third place filed, nil. Sedgley Park in fourth place in National 2 North, 38. This was an extremely good performance by Sedgley. They wanted this to play this match very badly. It was delayed by 35 minutes because of the state of the pitch. They really wanted to play, as did Farr, of course. But the, everything went right for Sedgley. They turned up, they were highly motivated. They were orchestrated at 10, as always, by Steve Collins. Matt Gallagher, the leading try scorer in National 2 North, got another three tries today uh, from a, a powerful pack that was absolutely remorseless for anywhere near the Fard line. Fard will have to look at themselves pretty hard, I think, as a result of this. Yes, they were fielded a weakened team. That didn't really explain it. So, uh, the, before they go on to the next match, They'll have to consider some tactical issues, I think. But this was Sedgley's day. It was a weekend for home comforts in National 2 North, with Sedgley Park the only club to win on their travels. With Hull not in action after their meeting with Huddersfield was postponed, Rotherham and Sedge have reduced the gap at the top to 10 points. Stalbridge's win lifts them to four, whilst Chester and Bladen were the only two sides in the bottom half to pick up victories. Congratulations to all the National 2 North sides on their victories. Finally, let's head into National 2 South and to the capital, where Barnes take on Bury St Edmunds. Whilst hardly a classic in a game that was marred by the conditions, Barnes and Bury St Edmunds played out a six-all draw in West London, with the boots of Rob Kirby and Charlie Reid doing the work. Thanks to their result on Saturday afternoon, Worthing Raiders have now charged into the National 2 South title race. Only giving up points to two Jacob Murphy penalties, a double for Jack Forrest and a try for Cassius Cleves won the game for the travelling side. Fourteen tries are scored in this game with Dean's Crusaders coming out on top of this shootout with Rochford 100. Chris Dudman and Mackie Nabogi were amongst the scorers for the road team, whilst Ollie Bilton, Luke Arscott, and Buster Lawrence were just some of those to score for the home team. At Dry Lees, Henny Hawks finished their game against Guernsey Raiders without having conceded a point. Scores came in the form of a double for George Wood, as well as efforts from Ruben Norville and Will Crow, whilst Cale Cookland knocked over one penalty. A late penalty miss from Sam Morley in the East Midlands secured a 15-13 win for Hinkley. Following a strong first half performance in which Dale Bowyer and Matt Fern scored tries, a second half resurgence from Isha spearheaded by Morley was topped only by the doggedness of the home team. Devon Constance's good form for Leicester Lions continued on Saturday, the win scoring two tries against Canterbury in a comprehensive victory. Alex Wilkinson, Ed Sumter and Simon Johnson all registered five pointers too. Clifton tight head prop Alex Giltro certainly had a day he'll never forget by scoring three tries against Old Albanian. Other scores for the visiting team were scored by Brad Talbot, Finley Sharp, Harry Sherl and Sam Brody. The sole OA's try coming from Chris West. Red Ruth stay at the top of National 2 South thanks to their six try win over Westcliff in Cornwall. Without conceding the point, Nigel Hambley's side scored tries through Sean Buzzer, Will Trowin, Dean Bonds and Sam Parsons. So here are the scores after this round. Obviously Barnes and Bury St Edmunds playing out a six all draw in West London. Barnstable losing to Worthing. Dings Crusaders picking up a handy win over Rochford. Henley beating Guernsey. Hinkley narrowly edging out Isha. Leicester Lions picking up a handy win over Canterbury. Old Albanian losing at home 7 points to 52. And Redruth beating Westcliff 40 0. At the top of the table, there is added intrigue as Worthing pull level with Isha. Clifton have a three point buffer between those two teams and a four points behind league leaders Redruth. And in the bottom half of the National 2 South table, there is little change with only Hinkley and Dings Crusaders picking up wins at the weekend. Well, that's it for another week on the National League Rugby Review Show. Make sure you join us next time for Round 22.